I am uh, not Andy Howard. I'm actually a colleague of his. I'm a power amplifier designer at Agilent Technologies. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about uh, load pool simulation. And mainly, we're going to, first of all, we're going to go through some load pool setups, describe load pool, uh, why, why it's worth doing. And then we'll, uh, we'll do a, a few simulation setups. So I'll show you how to use um, load pool on some of these nonlinear device models to determine some of your um, impedances for your amplifier that you're designing. Okay, so this is just a really basic load pull setup, block diagram for a load pull setup. And um, in this case, uh, you know, we, we, as opposed to sort of linear amplifiers, low noise amplifiers, things like that, where you have uh, small signals being applied, when, you, when you're working with uh, power amplifiers or larger signal devices, um, the load that you pick for the amplifier can actually affect the voltage and current waveforms of your device. And that can change your output power and PAE performance. So it's really necessary to run a, a load pool characterization and simulation on this type of device. And a load pool simulation is really just when you sweep the um, load impedance or a particular impedance, the real and imaginary parts of it, around the Smith chart. And uh, you look at the power or other performance that the amplifier is able to deliver over those various types of loads. Um, so, so it's very simple to just sweep the fundamental load around the Smith chart. It's easy to do that. But also, uh, it's very important to uh, potentially look at the harmonic uh, frequencies. So as the as, uh, amplifier gets driven into compression, the harmonics can come up, and the terminations of those frequencies can impact your performance. And also, then, you have an input matching network as well and an input source. So the source impedance uh, can also determine the performance of your amplifier. So it's also necessary uh, sometimes to sweep the source impedance to achieve a particular mode of operation. So uh, let's say that you get a device model and you, you really don't know what it looks like or you haven't worked with it before. So it's always good to start with a really simple setup. So, um, so this is sort of the first uh, sweep that we might do, which is just sweeping the fundamental impedance. And this is kind of to give you a kind of painting with a broad brush to see where your amplifier is going to, um, what, what some of the contour regions are. And for these other things, what we'll do is just make reasonable assumptions. So like for the harmonics, we can make reasonable assumptions based on the class of operation. If we have a class F amplifier, we can you know, just assume the second harmonic might be a short, the third might be an open, and then we're going to drive it with some amount of source power and make similar assumptions about the biasing. So this is really just to get an idea of what the, um, what the amplifier is. It's not going to be the most accurate, but it is a very fast way to do a, a quick simulation. So, so now we can add a little bit of complexity to that sweep, and we can actually do a, a power sweep in addition to a load sweep. And the reason is that the amplifier uh, is nonlinear, so the gain compresses and changes versus the input power. And so there's actually two things that affect the performance of the amplifier, the, the level of compression of the output signal and also the load impedance that's being presented. So this simulation will really let us see the different, um, the, the way that the in load impedance and the input power interact to give you optimal operation. So if you have a, a, an amplifier that's being driven at, a, at one power, um, you may be inclined to pick a, a certain load value, and then if you change the power, you might want to pick a different value of load impedance. So this just lets us see the trade-offs. And then we're able to parse the data once we have it. So we generate the data, and then we can look at it in different ways. Um, similarly, we can run a, a harmonic phase sweep. So, so um, we can change the phase of the harmonic, and we can look at for any particular fundamental impedance we can change, change the phase of the harmonic, and that may change the class of operation of our amplifier. And we can, again, um, sweep around the edge of the Smith chart. Typically, uh, harmonic impedances you, you know, are going to be reflective. They're not going to be resistive. So usually, we're looking at sort of open and short, very high uh, visoire circle around the Smith chart. And that's going to help us set the classes of operation. And here, just showing that it's, it's really easy to just, in this particular setup, to just change the, um, the uh, harmonic frequency and sweep it and see the results. And uh, you know the, the the source stimulus also changes the the you know determines what we may want to look at. So for example, um, you know we may the, the easiest simulation to run and fastest is just a one tone simple sim, you know simple uh, power sweep simulation. But of course we can get more data if we do two tones. So if we do two tones, then we can get something like IMD. And actually, with most practical amplifiers, the most uh, the most realistic uh, input source is actually a modulated source. And so we can run an entire modulated signal through the amplifier, change all the loads, and then look at the output spectrum. So here we're looking at the adjacent channel leakage ratio uh, from a modulated source that we're applying to the amplifier. 
But the problem with this is that it takes a long time. Um, these types of simulations, since we're running sort of a transient type of simulation, it could take a while. So uh, I just want to point out, and I'll show later, that it's also possible if you don't have too many memory effects in your power amplifier, you can get a lot of these output spectral um, types of measurements, uh, pretty good estimates from just a simple one-tone uh, simulation. So basically, we'll do the one-tone simulation, and we'll apply the modulated signal to that. Another thing, so, so typically, I mean, what I've been talking about so far is just designing a matching network with, with uh, load pull simulation. So we're pulling the device. But in practical amplifier design, once you put that output matching network on, if you put a load at the other side of that uh, matching network, like if you're doing some kind of communication system, let's say you have an antenna, well, you, you wouldn't want your amplifier to be very, very sensitive to changes in the antenna. At the very least, you wouldn't want your amplifier to blow up if you change the load of your antenna. Right? So, so for reliability or device robustness, you want to be sure that, uh, that, your, that your amplifier is performing well. So here we're just sweeping um, visoire circles of the fundamental load. And that may simulate either if you have a bad antenna or if you have no antenna at all, what happens to your amplifier. And you want your amplifier to be fairly robust over those conditions. So there's a simulation setup uh, that I'm showing here for that as well. And, and by the way, we're, right now we're using a device model. But for this type of simulation, we could easily use an X-parameter uh, model as well. OK, so uh, I just went through some of the basic setups. And now I'm going to show you. So we use these setups to generate uh, data. And so how you process the data is also just as important as, as the setup itself. And the idea is to, to run the minimal amount of, of data points to get, um, to get meaningful uh, results out of it. So the method that I'm showing here to generate um, some of these results, we're just basically sweeping the um, real and imaginary impedances that directly in the amplifier here in ADS. And, um, you know, doing this as opposed to sweep, doing like a, a circular sweep on the Smith chart, it gives us this somewhat rectangular region. Um, but it is, it is simple, a simple way to get down to the lower impedance side of the Smith chart. Uh, the downside to this approach is that the, the contours are circular. So with circular contours on a rectangular region, we may not get the full contour. Um, so this is just for, for every type of power amplifier, of course, we're doing load pull simulation to look at trade-offs between things. And the most fundamental trade-off in any type of power amplifier is the output power versus PAE. So here we have the output power and the PAE load contours. These are fairly standard contours for this type of device. And I'm just showing a plot where another way to look at that trade-off is to plot the two directly against each other. And this gives you a family of curves for each different load. And so looking at this plot, you can also uh, easily see the region where it's easy to see the region where you can get the highest output power, for example. But you also can see the trade-off. And of course, as a designer, you want to be on the top right-hand side of this plot because uh, that's the region with high P-out and high PAE. And this is just an example of looking at the load point with the highest PAE instead of, instead of or sorry, the highest power instead of the highest PAE. And so what we can add to this then, of course, the next logical thing is to add a power sweep to this. So here I'm just going to sweep the input power. And now we can look at uh, families of, of curves that are actually the entire compression curve. So instead of just one single power point, now we can deal with data that's, that's part of the entire compression curve. And once again, we can generate these curve families of the, um, of the input power sweep. And, and I've got a slider on this uh, simulation that I can change. And that'll give me the family of curves for a very specific input power. So the next couple slides, I'm just showing how the results will change. So and you can look at these, uh, these uh, load pull circles or this curve. And what we're looking at is, at an exact output power, what is, you know, what is the effect of changing the input power? And so here, you can see the curves changing as we, on the top, sweep this slider. So you can see the curves change. The impedances that you might want to select depend on the input power that you're driving the amplifier with. And just like we can, we can look at a particular input power, we can also interpolate the, um, the data at a particular output power. So here I'm, I'm looking at the data at 31 dBm. And I've got uh, little pink dots here that show all the loads where, where the amplifier actually didn't reach this. It didn't reach this uh, amount of compression. And the reason is because at that load value, it just compressed too early. And so the amplifier was fully down here in compression before the load, the output power was reached. So in this case, uh, quite a few of the loads are um, or, you know, don't reach the desired output power. And so if you're, if you're designing an amplifier here, you may want to think about, well, you know, if you pick a load that's really, really close to this, and then you have some variation on your antenna side, that may cause you to not make the output power that you want. So it's, it's 
kind of insightful there, and now I'll just look at it at, we'll change, the, we'll change it to uh, 30 here instead of 31. So there's 30, we're just slicing it now at 30 uh, dBm out, and you can see that and there's a lot more points now where of course we can, we can achieve the uh, desired value, but also the, uh, the efficiency contours move up as well, so they're closer to that region where we're not achieving the power. And that's because the amplifier is a little more compressed in that region. So the further compressed the power amplifier is, the higher the efficiency is going to be. So it kind of makes sense. But there are now we have all these other additional loads. But to get the efficiency, uh, we need to compress it further. And so that's sort of the trade-off that we're looking at. And uh, you know, similarly, we can take a look at this data and look at the load with both the um, the minimum gain compression. So in this case, we actually have. Uh, we can easily select and find that condition, and this is an, expansion, uh, an expansive load. So at this particular output power, uh, I think it's 30 dBm, we're showing the load that gives us the, the least amount of compression. And by the way, it's very easy to see here that, that that particular load has one of the lowest PAEs of any load. It's the least compressed amplifier, so there's, there's the least amount of PAE. And we can also look at the, um, the load that gives the maximum PAE and see that that output power is quite compressed. Uh, so again, we have the whole family of curves, and here we're just selecting two different curves uh, based on some parameter of the curve. And, and, you know, 1 dB gain compression is fairly arbitrary. We can choose 2 dB gain compression and get similar data. Um, you know, and here we just look at, at, at 2 dB gain compression. We can look at the, the max PAE load versus the, the max delivered power load. And we can also look at, for any particular case, the performance at back off, since we have all the entire curves. Here we just have a max efficiency and max power load impedances. And this is just sort of tabular form of that data. And so the point is the gain compression is arbitrary. Um, here we, we can actually specify the amount of gain compression we want, and we can get all the contours for that exact amount of gain compression. Uh, so it's, it's just an arbitrary number. OK, so, um, so now, now let's talk a little bit about how we can do a modulated you know, spectral data from a one-tone simulation, right? It's just one tone. Well, what we do is we apply a complex input signal, which I'm showing here, to the nonlinear AM to AM and AM to PM transfer curves of the amplifier, and we will get a distorted output signal, which is right here. And so it turns out that the difference, you know, the input signal is kind of our reference. It's, it's our clean signal, and the output signal is a little bit distorted. So the difference between these two points is the error vector magnitude. And from that, we can compute the output spectrum of the amplifier. So here's a more complicated um, modulation, more realistic modulation. I think it's like wireless LAN. And you can see actually that most of the distortion happens around the edges of the polar plot. And the reason for that is that that's the region where the amplifier is more distorted. And from this, of course, it's easy to arrive at the output spectrum and look at the adjacent channel power. Kind of flip through the slide. Um, I'm going to, just in the interest of time, the clock's yellow, so I'm going to kind of skip through. Um, but point is, we can plot EVM uh, contours. We can look at performance under, um, under modulated signals, current, and things like that. Um, so just to summarize, uh, there's a lot of load pool capability in the ADS design tool. And uh, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's fairly complicated. But the good news is, we, we've done a lot of the legwork for you. So these load pool design guides exist. And uh, you know, we, we highly recommend that you utilize them, and then you can focus on your device. You don't have to worry about getting a complex simulation set up. These templates exist for you, and um, they're available to use. And for more information, um, for more information, you can look here. And all these slides are provided on the on the CD that we're giving. All right, thanks.